Yo, what's good people? Welcome to another video on the channel. My name is Gifted, huge basketball enthusiast. It's been a while, but we back. Don't have much time. I have to go to work in 20 minutes. So we're gonna bang out through this quickly. Last night, the plan was amazing. We saw the Pelicans absolutely put on a spectacular performance versus the Paul George Les Clippers. They were able to win and they made the playoffs sufficiently now as the A seed. And then for the seventh seed, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves. And then in the East, we have the Hawks, who also put on a phenomenal performance. Trey Young was spectacular in the second half. And now they are the eighth seed. And then you also have the Brooklyn Nets, who beat the who beat Cleveland in the first round. And they are the seventh seed. So we're going to quickly go through these playoff matchups. There's not going to be a super long video. We're going to have more detailed videos coming soon. So I got the Suns. Beating the Pelicans in five games, I think Brandon Ingram can get one, and I just love the the uh, team chemistry and the camaraderie of this team. They've had a turbulent season all season, so for them to just even be in the playoffs is tremendous and gives them a lot of confidence as a team and a franchise going forward. So I got the Suns in five. The Suns are a, a really well oiled team. I'm gonna put put some respect on their name. Um, then you have. Mavericks Jazz. I got the Jazz in six. Um, I know it's popular to dislike the Jazz because of Rudy Gobert and how he allegedly doesn't play defense. When in reality, the team defense around him is just really, really bad. Um, the thing is, Luca is hurt, and I can't put stock in that. No matter how good Luca is, and I just have to respect the fact that if Luca's not going to be playing basketball. They're going to be a significantly worse team, especially going up against a team like the Jazz, where Donovan Mitchell, for all his faults, is a phenomenal playoff performer. So I got the Jazz in six. Now, my team, Golden State Warriors versus the Denver Nuggets. I will say Golden State can win this. Um, I'm going to say in six because Jokic is such a a threatening force. However, if if the pieces come right together, they should be able to beat them in five, I think. Um, no disrespect to Jokic, but just not having um, his star pieces on top of the Warriors being at full uh, health and seeing Steph, Clay, and Draymond in a series together with Jordan Poole as another shot creator, I just think that gives them the edge. So I'm going Warriors in six officially, though. Um, for the last matchup, um, Memphis-Minnesota is very intriguing to me. A lot of people have Memphis blowing them out, five games, yada, yada, yada. But they play each other very tough in the regular season. I think that for Minnesota to finally make the playoffs, they're going to have a spark in their back as well. And I think that there's a, a chance that Carl Anthony Towns can be the best player in that playoff series alongside Anthony Edwards' emergence as the perimeter scorer. Also, D'Angelo Russell has constantly cooked and gotten off on their team consistently. So there's a lot of value there. Um, I'm going to go Minnesota in seven. I actually believe that, that they can beat the Grizzlies. That might not be popular, but that's how I feel. I think Cat being a spacing five could potentially take Steven Adams off the floor. And if that happens, um, the versatility JJJ gives you is not going to be fully reached, in my opinion. So I'm going to go Minnesota in seven. Much respect to the Grizzlies, though. They could easily beat them. Okay. So we now got to get to the second round. So then by that logic, you'd have Suns versus Jazz. I have the Suns in six. I I think the Suns are just a really good team. Um, To be honest, they could probably, probably beat them in five if we're really being honest. But I'm going to go six just because I think the Jazz can play really strong defense in the paint at the very least. But the Suns are just, man, I don't know. I don't know. I might go Suns in five, to be honest, but the Suns are, are a scary team. Yeah, okay, you know what? We'll go Suns in five. Suns in five. Um, They're probably going to blow things up in Utah after this playoff season, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so then you have the Golden State Warriors versus the Timberwolves. I have Golden State beating the Timberwolves in six. I still like the Timberwolves, but I think Golden State's a bad matchup for them because they're going to make them have to be disciplined on how they guard. And I just don't think that they're going to be able to consistently do that versus the Warriors. However, Cat is scary for the Warriors. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. So then in the conference finals in the West, 
we now have the Suns versus the Warriors. This is uh the matchup everyone's been anticipating and waiting on. Um, a lot of people think the Suns are just gonna walk through the West. Um, I believe the Warriors are gonna beat the Suns. Now, obviously, I'm a Warriors fan. Do with that information what you will. But I just think Steph, Clay, and Draymond being together in a series with Jordan Poole, you have other types of pieces as well with a lot of depth. And considering every matchup that they've had against each other has been close and they've been like dominant, like like dominant teams as well. I have the Warriors, but this will probably be the best playoff series um this year to me. So I hope that happens. I got Warriors in six. Could go seven games, honestly. But I think the Warriors can close them out based on the matchups. All right, now quickly, um, I have eight minutes. We got to get to the East. Okay, so the East. Um, Heat versus Hawks. A lot of people give the Hawks a lot of crap because of how disappointing their season has been. I'm not going to be on that. The Hawks are a good team that can hit the switch at times, I guess. I don't. I don't like the turbulent season, but the point is um, the Hawks have a great offense, even though they don't have a, a great defense. The Heat are a complete team through and through, but I question sometimes their half-court offense. But I still believe that the closing lineup of Jimmy Butler, Bam, Kyle Lowry, PG, like that versatility to me is going to overcome the Hawks' offensive punch. So give me the Heat in six. I think they can beat the Hawks. Um Philadelphia, Toronto, great series. Um, obviously, people want James Harden to fail. They think he's going to be bad, but I, I just think the the Embiid stuff is just too much for the Raptors to overcome. Now, obviously, if there's one coach to scheme him out and you know shock the world, it will be Nick Nurse. So I'm going to put respect on Nick Nurse. I think Thibel not being able to play is tough. Um, give me Philadelphia in seven. I say seven because Thibel not being able to play uh on the road is going to be extremely tough and it could force it seven but I also think that James Harden is just gonna be better in the playoffs than most people think so this could go six but I have Philadelphia winning Doc Rivers please don't fail me okay uh Bucks versus Bulls I feel bad for the Bulls DeMar DeRozan was playing a phenomenal basketball almost MVP level um but they just don't have the pieces man they're hurt they're small, and they're going up against one of the worst mismatches in the Bucks. I got the Bucks in five. I, I think DeRozan can probably get you one. We'll see how that goes. Also, shout out Zach Levine. He's been hurt a lot, but he's still played really good basketball when he's had the chance to. Okay. Uh, Boston, Nets. This this could also be um, one of the best playoff matchups this year um, ever in the first round. I'm going Boston in six. I know that's surprising. Um, I don't hate KD. I don't I don't hate Kyrie, but we've seen them combine for 60, 70, 80 points and their team still lose. I think Boston just has more depth. I think they have a, a better defensive identity. And I think that they can exploit more mismatches on the Nets than the Nets can exploit on Boston. And to me, that's really the key difference, especially when you have Jalen Brown and Tatum um, getting isolations on guys like Kyrie Irving, Patty Mills, Seth Curry, Blake Griffin, potentially like I just like that um experiment for Boston. So give me Boston in six. The Nets can win. They have the star power, but I just think Boston overall has a better team. Okay, so then you would have the Heat versus the Sixers. I think that's a good, good series, bro. Um, to be honest though, um, I might go Heat. Um, I like the 76ers, but to me, Doc Rivers, like at a, at a certain point, the coaching stuff is going to have to matter. And I think Spolstra can run circles around Doc as a coach. And I still don't think James Harden is going to be back to, to the full James Harden we know. I still think he'll be good. But I think based on that, their versatility could be enough to beat Philadelphia. But there also is a chance that Philadelphia star power just shines through and carries them through that adversity and that turbulence. So for now, I'm going to go Heat in seven. But the Sixers could take that. Okay, so then you then have Bucks Boston. As good as Boston is, I just think the Bucks are are the favorite to come out, man. Um, since preseason, if you've been watching me, um, I said that the Bucks were gonna win the title in preseason. That that's how high I've been on the Bucks, and with Brook Lopez coming back and Giannis being the MVP version of himself, Drew and Chris 
uh, coasting throughout the entire regular season, but turning their games up at the end of the season. I just think that continuity and like the physical mismatch it'll create against Boston, I think the Bucs can win that series. So I'm going to have the Bucs in six on that one. It will be a, a good series though. Okay, so Eastern Conference Finals, we're going to have the Bucks versus the Heat. This 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 series, I like this because last year it was a mismatch. They played each other, yada, yada, yada. Um, but now this year they're going to have to actually like play against each other again. Um, the Heat do give Giannis problems as far as efficiency, but I think the level of Giannis's passing has increased tremendously, and he was able to pick apart that defense with his advanced reads. And I think... Drew and Chris are the X factors in that series. Last year, um, they were able to really, really make a run with like their spacing and their shooting, despite Giannis not doing that. And Giannis still impacted the game in that way. So I'm gonna go the Bucks in six, in six this time because the Heat have a better roster. Respect the Heat. Okay, so in the finals we have the Warriors versus the Bucks. I called this. I said either the Lakers. Or the Warriors would be in the finals. I said it was based on where Clay is. Clay is good. I'm gonna go Warriors. I know that my initial pick was Bucks, but listen, I am a Warriors fan, and I think that the style of offense that they play versus the Bucks are, is gonna be different, and I think can present some problems for them that could overtake them in the finals. But let's not get it twisted. Giannis is is a MVP caliber talent. In my opinion, he's probably the best player in the league. And I think there's a great argument for them winning this series. But I'm going to lean to Warriors based on their continuity. Um, That big three in the playoffs, they've never lost when they've started together fully healthy every game. And I think if that's the case, they're going to win the finals this year. Um, Book that. That's how I feel. But yeah, those are my playoff predictions. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. We're going to have a lot more videos breaking down basketball and playoff matchups in the future. Uh, Peace out. No edits on this one because I have work in literally 15 minutes. So peace out, people. And subscribe. By the way, subscribe. (laughs) Peace.